Former Vice President Mike Pence wasting no time slamming uh, President Biden's decision to run for re-election, calling his administration's record a disaster. Watch this. People look at the record of the Trump-Pence administration, uh, a record that uh, rebuilt our military, revived our economy, secured our border, saw conservatives appointed to our courts. And despite uh, President Biden's announcement today, uh, the record of the Biden administration has been a disaster True. for the American people at home and abroad. Whoever is a standard bearer in the Republican Party, I, 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 I welcome the opportunity to contrast uh, our record, our policies okay. built on economic freedom with the, with the record of failure of the Biden administration in uh, 2024. All right, America's Newsroom co-host Bill Hemmer is with us on hey guys, set. Bill, afternoon. thanks for being here. Okay, so I, I didn't yeah. count for sure there, but I think I heard the former vice president say the word record yeah. like five times. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you watched President Biden's video. Yes. That one place he didn't go was his record. Yeah, his own record. Who's going to win that I debate? agree. I think that was the glaring omission in the video from earlier today. Good, good, great to be with you guys. Hi. I'm going to Spotify after this to make sure I... <laughs> I'm up to speed in all your tunes. That's a commercial we wanted. Um, right on. Uh, so that was the glaring omission, and Senate Republicans went after it immediately. They had a video to respond to it. Um, that's pretty dire and dark, I would suggest, but they, they kind of see it the same way Pence does. Uh, here's my feeling right now. Um, uh, they've done a bunch of surveys over the past six months, and if you look at some of them, among Democrats now, there have been eight different polls over the past six months among Democrats, 38 percent want him to run, 57 uh, percent want someone else. So that's kind of what he's stacked up against. And we were looking at some numbers from some of these battleground states from the election of 2020 from earlier today. Think about Georgia. Yeah. Think about Wisconsin. Think about Arizona, not to mention Pennsylvania. But among those three states, 42,000 votes decided all three. Yeah. Wow. Today, the president's approval rating in Georgia is at 42 percent. Mm. Mm. In Wisconsin, he's at 41. Mm. In Arizona, he's at 38. So those are the headwinds he has right now about a year and a half, 18 months mm. out of a major campaign. Mm. Bill, let me ask you this. A lot of people wouldn't necessarily disagree with Mike Pence, but the landscape has changed a little bit since the last election, and that was the Dobbs case, right? We saw it in the midterms. We were expecting a red wave that didn't materialize, and abortion was a huge mm. issue for a lot of people. Can a GOP candidate, anybody that's announced that they're running, can any of them win um, with a very, very hard line on abortion? Yeah. I mean, or does there need to be some sort of compromise? I, I think what's, what's interesting about this whole development is if you talk to the different candidates, they all have a different strategy for it. And I think oftentimes when governors are on our air or even candidates are on our air, they all have a different way of presenting it. Um, I'm not sure what the line is. I don't know how you really thread it uh, in a national election. I know what Trump has said already. He said, you know, there should be no federal ban on it. Um, that is not pleasing to those who are pro-life. They think he needs to go further. Mm. And if he were to be the candidate and the Republican side, I would look at that issue and see whether or not... Uh, he needs to define it better for himself in order to have a successful election. Because at that, it, it, it's not that his mm. voters would vote for Joe Biden. It's that his voters would not vote. Mm. Right. Mm. Uh, there's a reason I kind of joke that I'm on the business channel, not mm -hmm. the news channel, because some of the politics <laughs> can drive me absolutely <laughs> wild. I'm sort of one of these statistics that I'm going to read out to you next. Sure. Americans have a highly negative view on both parties' leadership. This is according to a new survey uh, from the Pew Research Center, basically saying that no one can get anything done. Mm -hmm. And we're so polarized that there's no compromise anymore. We talk on this program about the debt ceiling. You can't even get a debt ceiling, something that should be a huge, easy way yeah. to come together. Why is that? Yeah. Why, and how I, I do think we it, fix it? I mean, my, my reaction, that at, t at times it has been easy. The two have come together. And, you know, the American people, many of them say, and now look where you got us, you know, $31 trillion in debt. Mm -hmm. I think Kevin McCarthy's proposal is interesting. He's going to give a little. He mm -hmm. wants to take a little. Mm -hmm. I, it, it's not his final offer. I don't think it'll pass. And we'll see whether or not the two sides uh, can come together. I found this on NBC, all right? They say substantial majorities of Americans don't want Trump or Joe Biden to run for president in 2024. Uh, so if you have an election and nobody cares, what happens as a result of that? Mm. Um, ask yourself this. 
In 2020, when Joe Biden was campaigning, there were times late in that season, right? These are COVID years. Mm -hmm. Everybody's taking mm -hmm. precautions. And Biden primarily was in Wilmington or he went to Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And it's a short drive between the two. But sometimes, see, I, I'm pretty sure it was North Carolina, maybe it was Wisconsin, uh, maybe it was Michigan. He'd go to drive in movie theaters and people would pull up in the middle of the day with their cars and right. they'd sit on their hood or they stay in their car, they're socially distanced, and they honk their horn with approval. Well, you, you don't do that in 2024. Nope. And you have to wonder, you know, what does his campaign look yes. like? at age 82 and 2020. A more normal life is an X factor in this campaign, I would say. One other potential X factor is the name Hunter Biden. Mm -hmm. Do you think this, that issue becomes one that becomes decisive in some of those key places you're talking about mm -hmm. where the president has some vulnerability right It, now? it could. I know what the polling suggested after the election of 2020 when they said the uh, the Hunter laptop was actually real. I think like 17% of those said they would have changed their vote. Well, I just rattled off three right. states for you. You think what 70% of the turnout could have been in each of those states. Maybe it could have a factor here. Uh, we're five years on. Uh, I know James Comer's talking pretty big about what they're finding, and let's see in the end what they turn up. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it, it's, it's been around a long time, and some folks have really waited for it to stick, and it just hasn't had yeah. that sticky factor quite yet. We shall see. Bill, we appreciate you being with yeah, us today. Bet. Thanks. And Bill Thank has you. a brand-new special, by the way, available now on Fox Nation. It's called Who is Asa Hutchinson? Taking a closer look at the Republican presidential candidate. That's on Fox Nation. I will be live streaming that.